What we're looking at in this video is how we can count in binary, so when we've just got ones and zeros available and not the other numbers. And before we take a look at how we're going to do binary, we're going to take a look at how we do denary, which is base 10. And so let's go and recap what you probably learned when you were five or six or maybe earlier. So what we have is a ones column, and this is easy. Initially, it's got no balls in it, so that would be zero. And we put one ball in, that would be one. Two balls, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is easy to represent because we've got numbers and we just have a new number every time we add a ball. But when we get to nine, we've run out of numbers. We don't have another number beyond nine. So what we do is we say, if we put just one ball in this box, that will represent nine plus one which we know is 10, we've given it a different name, but in writing, we don't have a different way to put it. So we take all of these balls out, and we put just one in the tens column, and so that number now that we're representing is a one, zero. So we've got zero in this column, and we've got one ball in this column, and we call that number 10. And so now we can start adding balls again, and so we add more balls here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so this number here would be nine, zero. And if we want to start adding more balls, we could still put more balls in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so this would be nine, nine, or 99. So we've run out again, we try to add a ball to this, we can't, we try to add a ball to this box, and we can't. So now we need to use the hundreds column. And so we say if we put just one ball in the hundreds column, and then we erase out all the others, we will have 100 or 100. Zero, zero. And so the number which we're representing here is 1, 0, and 0, which we know as 100. Now, counting in binary may look confusing. The best thing about it is that it's actually really, really easy. In fact, it's even easier than counting in base 10 because you've only got two numbers to learn and you already know them. So let's look at how we do it with binary. And so what we're doing here is exactly the same, but each of these boxes can only store one ball. They either have a ball or they don't. So initially, I have zero. I'm not storing anything. And in fact, all of these boxes contain zero. And this very much looks like binary. So now I put one ball in. And so now this is zeros all the way across. And I've got one ball in, so it's a one. Now I've run out of room in this box to put any more balls. So what do I do? Exactly like in base 10, I say I'm going to put a ball into this box, and I'm not going to put a ball into this box. And so now I will have one zero. Now this isn't 10, because 10 has a completely different meaning. This is a one zero. And the number which that represents is two. So this was my ones column, just like it was in base 10. And this one here is therefore my twos column. If I want to represent the number 3, I can take my 2 here, add 1 to it, and so this here I'm representing 3, and that would be 1, 1. So 1, 1 is the same as 3. I run out of space again if I want to add another ball, so I put my next ball in here, and I erase the other 2. And so this here is representing now the number four. I've got one ball in here and no balls in here, and this represents the number four. So this is my fours column. And you see that every time here, when I'm thinking up the column numbers, I'm just doubling each time. So that's my eights column, my sixteens, my thirty twos column, sixty fours, hundred and twenty eights, and two hundred and fifty six and so on up. So now, if I want to create a number, all I have to do is to put the appropriate balls into the appropriate boxes. So let's say that I want to make the number 17. 
How do I do that? Well, 17, it's almost 16, so I put in 16 first. So I need a one in there. And 16 plus one makes 17. So if I put another ball in here, then that will be another one ball in here. So and let's just get the correct answer. So that will be 17. And if we look at this, it's essentially saying one times 16 plus one times one. So that's the ones column and the 16's column is 17. And because it's binary, we don't need to think we only ever can have one in there. So it's really just saying 16 plus one is 17. So now we're going to look at doing the number 73. So first of all, how many times does 64 go into 73? Well, we can get one into that. So we'll put one in the 64. We can't get 128 in, so we won't use these ones. So we're going to have nothing inside there. Inside the 32's column, well, if we take 73 and we take away the 64 from it, we're going to get 9. So we don't need any 32's, we don't need any 16's, but we do need an 8. 8 does go into 9, so we'll take an 8. And so now we've got 9 minus 8, which is 1. So we won't need any 4's, we won't need any 2's, and we will need that final 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and so we're done. So if we just look at what we're doing and double check, so we started off with 73 in base 10, and we've got the number which is 1001001, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, which is in base 2. And so let's just double check. We've got 164, we've got 18, and we've got 11. So 64 plus 8 is 72 plus 1 which is 73 in base 10, which is the answer which we wanted to get. And so you can see there that we can convert between binary and denary numbers and back again, and it's actually a very, very simple process.